Hey everybody, Adam here. I'm here to give you another video update for the Astrobase Command Kickstarter. Uh, today we're going to look at some gameplay. I'm going to give you a quick overview just to give you an idea of what the game is like. And uh, in later videos we're going to dig into some of the key features. Uh, big disclaimer, obviously everything you're going to see here is super pre-alpha. Uh, and if anything is especially ugly, that's probably my fault. I'm a programmer and I'm sorry. So let's dig in! Alright, so every new game of Astrobase Command begins with species creation. We'll dig into what all of this is in a later video dedicated specifically to species creation, but for now let's just go ahead and create something. So you could use the name generator if you want to, but in our case let's go for that Kickstarter Terrans. Haha, <laughs> funny guy. Uh, and then you have 42 points to spend because we're nerds, uh, and you'll be spending them in body, mind, and spirit. So what you're doing here is you're effectively creating a species average. So all characters have body, mind, and spirit stats. And uh, depending on how high or low your diversity is, people will tend to diverge from this species average. So at a diversity of zero, you're creating a clone army with these values specifically. The higher you ramp up your diversity, the more people will tend to be above and below these values, which means that if you're the kind of commander who has the luxury of waiting for those perfect recruits, then having a high diversity is perfect for you. Diversity also affects your, the physical appearance of your species. So in order to be able to customize that, we created basically three visual archetypes that you can edit. So you have the ability to set things like set skin color and hair. You can set sliders for things like face shape and so on. Um, and once you're happy with the results you get, you can go ahead and let's see, see that skin right there. All right, go ahead and jump into the game. All right, and we're in. So, feast your eyes on this procedurally generated scenery that Daniel worked so hard on. Uh, so this is a pre-made starter station that we use uh, for, for testing internally. Uh, the plan for release is to have a variety of pre-made starter stations that you'll be able to pick from. Um, and after we got a bunch of community feedback, we'll also be working towards being able to build something entirely from scratch that you really have 100% control over the design of your, your station. Um, so this station at the beginning is actually kind of easy mode because I already have a bunch of quarters here to accommodate uh, my entire crew and at different ranks and so on. Um, I've already got an abundance of cargo space left, or storage space, um, and I also have a lot of food left, so my crew will be fed for a little while still. Um, I have this fusion reactor, which already has somebody assigned to it, so it's going to be really easy to, uh, to power the entire station. Um, I even have a backup fission reactor here, which currently doesn't have anybody assigned. Uh, but I'll be able to run that for a little while. So I think that we're going to start with this by expanding the station a little bit. Um, so I already know that a lot of these jobs are pre-assigned with everyone, and so I'm going to need to recruit somebody new if I want to be able to fill this fission reactor job and be able to supplement my power, because over time, uh, modules are going to start to decay, and um, as hard as the maintenance workers are going to work on that, uh, if things like the reactors start taking damage as a result, their power output will start going down, which is why having a backup active is going to be a really good idea. So, um, I think our recruiter is currently working, sure enough. Um, so they're reviewing recruit applications, which is why I'm receiving these papers in the inbox right now. Um, so I'm going to let a few of those pile up. For now, I'm going to focus on building a new module so that I can accommodate a new recruit. So, we're going to open the module builder program here, and then we're going to start adding some stuff. So any module can take, uh, has four quadrants and can take uh, sections, which are rooms, um, that are one quadrant, two quadrant, or four quadrants in size, and we can place them in any orientation we want. So let's say that we want to put up two enlisted quarters, we want some, uh, an extra cantina so that they have a location to eat nearby, and we're going to add a little bit of storage here with an equipment locker so that um, we're able to put some food in there and that way they'll be able to, it'll be like a little self-contained unit. Um, you may have noticed that when I was messing over things that um, when I was messing over these sections that there are stats that are contributing to the modules. There's the skills that are required 
um, or that are helpful for the build crew to have in order to produce a high quality build. And there are the resources required to be able to build the, the entire project. So here are my total resource requirements. I have everything I need. Um, so we'll move on to the next part. All right, so now we're gonna be picking the build team that we want to put this together. So what we're trying to do here is to find people that fit within the point budget that we have. Um, their points are determined basically by their uh, stats, skills, and their current rank. So that number goes up over time, and that way you can't basically fill a build project full of captains. Um, so what we're trying to do here is to find people who have the desired build skills to basically uh, make the quality of the build as high as possible. So we're gonna we're gonna look at that. So Morgan Mullen would be a great fit because she has personnel, but it looks like uh, she's way over the point value. So we're gonna have to just compromise and go for uh, Taylor and Owen here. And go for quantity over quality. All right. So let's go ahead and press the build button here. And now we have to figure out where we want to place this. Obviously, since we can do 3D construction, we can put it on any floor we feel like. Um, and since we already have a bunch of quarters here and we have a cantina placed over there, it seems like it would be a good idea to put this over here. And that way, when I put my recruit up in here, they'll already be near the fission reactor, so everything will be close. Food, uh, sleep, and their job. Okay, so let's check out our recruiter's progress. So we've only received one application so far, and that one isn't actually a great fit. We have somebody here who's got some science going for them, but uh, that's not going to be super useful to us. So we're going to go ahead and toss that. All right, so we got a few more here. Um, so these ones aren't going to work out either, so we're going to get rid of them. And however, uh, Demarcus Gibson here has a point in engineering, which is exactly what we need. So we're going to go ahead and recruit this guy. Toss that into the outbox. As soon as that disappears, Demarcus will be show up in the crew. And we should be able to find him in the Rolodex. Here he is. All right, so these Rolodex, actually, you can pull these cards out and put them down on the desk, and they basically become a shortcut to find people on station. So if I right click this card here, I'll find our new recruit Demarcus over here. He's just wandering around because he doesn't really need very much right now. Um, he wants to socialize a little bit, but he generally only does that around the, the table right now. Um, so we're going to go ahead and now that we have him selected, we're going to go ahead and assign him to the fission reactor. And sure enough, since he didn't really have anything else to do right now because he's not, uh, his needs aren't very high yet, uh, he's going to go ahead and go work at the fission reactor. And there he goes. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an overview of everything. Obviously, if you have any questions, feel free to toss them in the comments uh, to reach out on Discord as well. Uh, we have the Discord server up, and you'll have the information in the post below. And um, yeah, I guess that's it. So until next time. Uh, let's get this thing funded.